back to uh, Blue Monday Live Studio. Uh, let's get some thank yous done. Uh, to Lamar Thompson with It's a Go Show, continuing to develop our product here. Uh, Raider Solutions for uh, working with us on the technology side. Uh, Mr. Ted Bertrand, you'll notice his artwork up in the back. Artworks by Ted Bertrand. Thank you for sharing uh, your passion pieces with us. And also Trent Hoog and his artwork being displayed in the back. Um, I know earlier in the week we announced that uh, the good news we had from Mr. Lee uh, with his um, cancer treatment. And what a wonderful day it is. This gentleman that we're going to introduce today as always, it's been such a blessing with Blue Monday Mission, getting to know the people that have dedicated their lives, their time, their talent to developing the culture that we have here throughout Acadiana. And with this COVID-19 thing and creating this live studio, it's given us the time to sit down one-on-one -on -one and really show that appreciation for one another, appreciate what, what they've all brought into my life and made my life worth living. Uh, this next gentleman joining us today is the epitome of that. Uh, we met in the first year of Blue Monday Mission, and um, it was obvious we were on the same page when it came to uh, living, loving, and helping others. Uh, it's an honor and a true blessing to be able to share this more than a talented musician uh, a passionate man, a loving grandfather, um, a songwriter to the hundredth power. Without further ado, Mr. Russell Cormier. There's this girl I know who lives in the past. I'd like to catch her, but she's moving too fast. Well, she runs like the wind and she blows like the sand. I'd like to catch the girl time and again. I said, I'm afraid for the girl, I know this won't last All this running around, she thinks that's all that she has I wish I could catch her heart and hold it in my hand Show her that love, it happens time and again I said, to catch her but she's moving too fast well she runs like the wind and she blows like the sand i'd like to catch the girl time and again i said John, thank you. Appreciate you. That was a song from the new album called uh, She Too Fast, a uh, new album called Our Country. Uh, and a lot of people think the song is about some girl that I probably was involved with, but it's not. People keep asking me, who was the song about? Now, it's, uh, songwriters never reveal who they write songs about, but believe me, it was about somebody who was close to me and 
uh, whom I love very much and who I wish would slow down just a little bit in their life. Yeah, she too fast. So we'll keep on with this uh, track. Um, you see what we're feeling today. Bob Marley was a good, good man. He fought for freedom, loved the Rasta man. Marcus Garvey said, take back our land. And let's go back and be Africans. And Peter Tosh said, equal rights. And Bunny Rugg said, you got the power. They were all freedom fighters who live and die for people's rights. Freedom fighters. Oh. Freedom fighters. Freedom fighters. Fighting for freedom. Fighting for freedom. Fighting for freedom. Fighting for freedom. Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham And Moses led the people to the promised land Harriet Tubman took the slaves and ran So Willie couldn't put forth his master plan Martin Luther said peace, not violence Malcolm X said no compromising They were all freedom fighters Who live and die for people's rights Freedom fighters Oh Freedom fighters Mandela was a good man Freedom fighters Freedom fighters Fighting for freedom, fighting for freedom, fighting for freedom, still fighting for freedom. Yeah, that's from the album Opposite People. It's a good little thing called Freedom Fighters. Um, <clears throat> a little something like that. Now we'll do a, um, but we do a Bob song. Old pirates, yes, them robbed I. Sold I to the merchant ships Minutes after they took I From the bottomless pits Still my hand was made strong By the hands of the Almighty And we followed in this generation Triumphantly, and won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Because that's all I've ever had. Did you know it was redemption song? Redemption song. He 
emancipate yourself from men to slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Have no fear for atomic energies, cause none of them can stop the time. In how long shall they kill our prophets? Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Have no fear for atomic energies. Well, none of them can stop the time. In how long shall they kill our prophets? Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? That's all I ever had. Did you know it was redemption songs? Redemption songs. Redemption songs. Songs of freedom Songs of freedom Songs of freedom Thank you, John. Yeah, so that was Bob. Guess I'm just showing my versatility. Of all to do, I like all kinds of music, <laughs> everything, anything. So I'm gonna play a little bit of all kinds of music, hopefully today, of everything I love. Um, let me go back to the the Our Country album. Well, this is our country, land of the free, home of the brave. This is our country, where the stars spangled banner proudly wave. This is our country, where from sea to shining sea you hear freedom ring. This is our country, land that we call the USA. 
she's home to many people from the Indians to the pilgrims to the slaves and aboard us greet men like the immigrants who come from many lands some who come is seeking opportunity to live the American way cause this is our country land that we call the USA well this is our country land of the free home of the brave well this is our country where the star spangled banner proudly waves and this is our country where from sea to shining sea you hear freedom ring and this is our country land that we call the USA where we live in peace now Cause a soldier stands his watch both night and day Protecting our freedom From the enemies both at home and far away And they just everyday heroes Honor and call of duty is their pledge And this is our country And this is our country, land of the free, home of the brave. And this is our country, where the star-spangled banner proudly waves. And this is our country, where from sea to shining sea you hear freedom reign. And this is our country, land that we call the USA. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you all. That's, that's from the new album, Our Country. And I wrote that song because... I think that we need to claim our part of this country. As every man who is a part of this United States of America, we need to claim our piece of this land, and then we'll be free, along with a few other things, like giving each other respect. If we give each other respect to each other's opinions, uh, whether we like them or not, because we don't like each other's opinions all the time. I don't like a lot of people's opinions and a lot don't like mine, but... If we respect each other's opinions, we could get along in peace mm -hmm. and we could live in peace, you know. And so uh, I wrote this song for all Americans. And I know people look at it weird like it's a man of my culture writing a country song. But like I said, I'm a songwriter. I write songs that of any kind of music because I love music. And I think, like you said, it's very appropriate, not just for a black man, but for white, for everybody. Indians, everybody, you know. Yeah, so that's our country. From the album, Our Country. Mr. Wilson, uh, how long have you been writing songs? Uh, since I was 16 years old, um, a girl broke my heart. <laughs> yeah, they take you in and take you out. Yeah, <laughs> take me in and take me out. Yes, I go. And what happened was uh, um, I used to carry her books to class. I would, I would take all my albums, my Parliament Funkadelic albums and all that. You know, I, I grew up in the 60s and 70s, so I had all these funk albums and jazz albums, and I'd ride with all my albums in a crate on my Schwinn all the way to her house from one side, from the north side, all the way to Macomb to the other side of town and sit on the sofa, listen to records with her, ride all the way back Monday through Friday. I'd walk her to class. and But anyway, after the basketball game, we were all basketball players. And uh, After the basketball came, game, we'd all go out to the Super Grove and Cade or to uh, 
the other the sportsman paradise on the Brobridge Highway, where she would dance with everybody, oh, but me, oh. and my <laughs> teammates would put, go dance with her, right? and you know, and I, no, no, I guess she's all right, you know. And anyway, she broke my heart. Oh. She was with every man but me. Oh. Oh. I, I don't hate her for it. As a matter of fact, I thank her for it. I learned at a young age, you know, what not to do with yeah. a woman, and so. Uh, my next door neighbor, Russell Garden, great guitar player. Remember, he passed away not too long ago. He was my next door neighbor. His dad was Chicken George, uh, George Gordon. Uh, his brother, Greg Gordon, who I played with for years, little Greg the drummer. Yeah, drummer. They were my next door neighbors, and they would play Honky Tonk. And I could hear it from the window because we didn't have air condition. We had a fan, the attic fan. You had to put a shoe yeah. in the door. And you open the window, crack in the window, and it sucked that air out, and the breeze come through the window. So the music would come through. And the bon ton was right behind my house. Remember the original bon ton on University? I've heard of it. That was behind my house. And so you had music coming from the bon ton. They was playing honky-tonk and uh, uh, Zydeco and stuff. And Chicken Jordan was playing honky-tonk next door. So I'd sneak out on Friday night and go listen to him, Uncle Allen, and uh, I forget the other guy, the uh, other uncle name. One was a fiddle. One was a stand-up bass, and Chicken played the guitar. And I watched him, so Russ walked in one night. He was on tour with Dupsy, and he said, boy, every time I come here, you sit there listening to my daddy and play. He said, you want to play guitar? He said, hold on. He went in his car, came back, and he had a little acoustic guitar, and he gave it to me. And um, uh, he said, you, I'm going to show you two chords. He showed me two chords. He showed me a C major 7. I'll never forget that. <laughs> Remember that song, Color My World? Yeah, my yeah, yeah, he showed me that. He said, if you learn that, by the time I come back, I'll teach you something else. By the time he came back, I had done learned all kind of stuff, and I had wrote all kind of songs, poems. I, st I had started writing poetry for the girl who broke my heart. <laughs> so I took the poetry that I was writing about her, and I started putting it to music, to the chord progressions that I was learning from him. And that's how I became a songwriter. Thank you for that lady breaking my <laughs> Here we are 200 something songs later. Exactly. <laughs> and, loving it. and loving it. So yeah, so that's that's how I started Lamar. I started uh by getting my heart heartbroken. Broken. Yeah. Mm. That's that's where the best music has come from. Of course. Yeah. Pain. Yeah. Bob got his heart broken too. No woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. No. Yard in Trench Town over, over observing the hypocrites as they would mingle with the good people with me. A good friend we've had, oh, a good friend we'd lost. How long the Forget your fears. So dry your tears, I say. And no woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. Yeah, I'm gonna just do a little short version of that one today because Russ's voice is not up to. <laughs> 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 yeah, I haven't, been, uh, I haven't blown out the cobwebs, y'all. Excuse me on that one. Yeah, I haven't blown out the cobwebs in a while. Yeah, my friend Keith uh, Sonia used to tell me, he said, Russ, when you're hoarse, you got to keep singing. I said, what? He said, yeah, that's how you get the cobwebs out. He said, sing through it. 
push ain't through. Yeah, he said push through it. <laughs> I don't think I'm not gonna do that on camera. <laughs> I'll do that at home. <laughs> but yeah, I think Bob got his heart broken a bunch of times too. It was one of my matter of fact, my favorite uh, songwriters is uh, Bob and. Of course, R. Kelly. A lot of people don't like R. Kelly, but he, I, he's... I make the joke all the time that if R. Kelly has to be in jail, please put a studio in his cell. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. the pain he's about to go through. Yeah, and, exactly. That's oh. gonna be some bad songs, <laughs> then, boy. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be some bad songs. Yeah, Kel's, uh He um. He uh. Writes some. You can write a song about anything. anything. Yeah. Dance, anything i mean you know i happy. just i recognize great songwriters because yeah. i'm a songwriter man you know and you gotta love the cat man. I agree. yeah you gotta love the cat so i always when i ever they ask me who you know are my favorite songwriters r kelly is one Got you. yeah i hate to say it he's one of them and um bob of course you know like i said bob's songs reflected so much of life and so much of the bible you know that uh the bible reflects life you know that it just amazed me, you know, the cat had to be reading because as I started reading the Bible after my uh, my wife passed away, I started reading the Bible. I started seeing all Bob's songs in there. I was like, yeah, that come from that song. Well, that come from that song, you know, and it's amazing. He was he was deep into the, the Bible, you could tell. All his songs reflected that. And, of course, into life. And he was a, you know, he was pro-life. He was for people. He was a, did more for people probably than he did for himself, I'm sure. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, beautiful cat, you know. So yeah, I'm just going along here. I'm just, I'm trying to think of songs. Like I said, I'm rusty and and um, I hadn't played or sang in a while, but that's no excuse. Like riding a bike. Like riding a bike, yeah. Is it for real or is it just a dream? Is life a fantasy or is it what it seems? Well, what good is it for a man to have everything he did? Yeah, and yet still feel lonely, feel like a king without a queen. He's singing, why yo yo, yeah, singing, why yo 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 yo, why yo 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 yo. Why yo yo yeah feel like a king without a queen yeah and what makes you smile sometimes it makes you weep what used to make you strong, sometimes it makes you weak. Well, what used to taste good before, it doesn't taste so sweet. What used to make you whole, sometimes it makes you weak. What good is it for a man to have everything he needs? Yet still feel lonely, feel like a king without a queen. He's singing, why yo yo, yeah. Singing, why yo 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 yo, why yo 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 yo, why yo yo, yeah. Feel like a king without a queen, yeah. What good is it for a man to have everything he needs? Yet still feel lonely, feel like a king without a queen. He's singing, why yo yo? Singing, why yo 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 yo? Why yo 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 yo? Why yo yo? Yeah, feel like a king without a queen. Yeah. Who's that? That's you? 
That would be me. <laughs> yeah, that's um. Is that off your new album, Our Country? No, that's so. That's um. We could say it is, but no. <laughs> that's um. That was on Opposite People, on the album Opposite People, and um. Every song, every album, I try to write a song about my wife. I didn't on this little EP, but every full length that I had a song, it was about her. In that time, it was that. Because um, a man, I feel like uh, I'm good and I'm happy in my life. And I got everything that I need except her. You know, I feel like a king without a queen. That's pretty much where that came from, you know. Um, How long ago have you lost her? Uh, yeah, it's been 2008, so it's been what, 11 years? 11 years. Yeah, yeah, almost 11 years. Yeah. And the, the CD before that, the song, the album before that, was uh. She's my angel, you know. She's my angel. Goes like she's my angel, you know, she's my angel talking to the father for me. She's my angel, you know, she's my angel. She made me believe in something I can't see. believe in God <laughs> you know yeah I believed before but she made me believe even more yeah yes yeah, so that was on another album that was angel that was about her so it's usually always in that same groove but it's about her that's her groove <laughs> yeah yes yeah, so. heartache yeah. still making you write music sounds like huh from the first song to the last song it sounds like heartache has been the inspiration pretty much yeah oh yeah girls is <laughs> That's how we came in. Come on, we we men. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We can't live. We can't live without them, man. No, no. Let's get you listening to the sounds of Russell Cormier, new album Our Country. If you want to make any donations, you can do so via Venmo. Love of people. I've been to so many different places Not knowing just what I'd find, yeah I've seen so many different faces But they all stay so fresh on my mind Some of them seem so lonely They trying to make it on their own, yes Wondering where to turn to Knowing you can't make no blood out of stone You see people everywhere they just want to be free They find it so hard Just to be who they got to be Woo, 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 woo It's got to be the teachings of their society Yeah Brother, you got that power To make a change Sister, you got that power Rearrange Brother, you got that power to make a change. Sister, you got that power if you want to rearrange. I've been through hard times, decisions. 
where I could not tell right from wrong, yes. But at the end of my destination, I found out that's just where I belong. You see, people everywhere, they just want to be free. They find it so hard just to be who they got to be. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's got to be the teachings of their society. Yeah. Brother, you got that power if you want to make a change. Sister, you got that power. Rearrange. Brother, you got that power if you want to make a change. Sister, you got that power to rearrange. You, 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 you got the power. You, 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 you got that power. And you, 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 you got That one. Yeah. That was a, that was mine. The second it started. It started on I was like, I put my hand on ow. Yeah. Uh-huh. What's the name of that one? Um, you got the power, third world. Bunny rugs. You know Bunny Rugs? Yeah, well, Born the same day with Bob Marley. Yeah. That that and uh Cat Moore, of course, the guitar player. Third world. Grew up listening to Third World. I love him. That's got, my favorite third the, world uh, song. Yeah, I was there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I've seen him twice. Um, that's, like, probably hands down my favorite third world song. Got the power, you know. People have to realize that. We all realize we got the power to do any, make our life do whatever we wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. And it kind of uh, talks about, you know, all our journeys. We've all been through some rough stuff, you know, some rough time. But come through it. Survival. Yeah, I think survival is a natural instinct of uh, of man. I'm sure it is. I don't think. I'm yeah. positive it is a natural instinct of man. From when you're a baby and you touch something that's hot. Oh yeah, natural instinct. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just fiddling around with my guitar, messing around with John and Lamar. I hadn't touched my guitar in a while. <laughs> hadn't touched my guitar in a while, but I miss her. I don't think since the last time I've been by Chad have I played, <clears throat> but uh, yeah. So um, we got a request, John. You, if you want to hear something, what would you like to hear? I want to. I want uh, for Russell to uh, tell us a story about your first day at the Solo Fest. Uh, solo oh. Fest. First day at Solo Fest. Oh. Yeah, that and was. Then, uh, from that story, go into an original. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my first day at the Solo Fest was scary <laughs> because I was paired with Bet Nielsen Chapman and Mark Broussard to write the first song early in the early that morning. Yeah, I was about to quit and go home. <laughs> I was like, I'm still over my pay grade, out of my league you know but but bet was so cool man she was like so um confidence giving and she made me realize that i'm here because i'm a songwriter that's why you're here she said we didn't just pick you today we looked at your stuff and saw your stuff and that's why you're here because we liked what you do you're a songwriter you're here for a reason and so, you know, with that confidence that she gave me, you know, and of course, Mark, Mark's cool, cool as a fan, you know, and with the confidence, you know, that they gave me and some of the other folks at the festival, Lance and uh, Jessica Sweetman, she became a good friend of mine. Confidence that they gave me, it made me uh, play out the reason why I was, why, why I was there, you know, and so I played out 
what I do, songwriter. So I wrote some cool songs while I was there with Beth and with uh, Mark and some a whole bunch of other people. But that first day, yeah. those first few hours were scary. I'm talking good. I'm, t- I'm cool now, you know, but it was scary, John. It, it's a great story to tell, and I love it when you tell it because, you know, so many different situations. Mm-hmm. You can be intimidated. You can be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Step up and do what, you, do what you know you can do. Yeah, that's right. And then I was going to I was gonna not come back the next day. Well, you know that part, you know, that I was not going to tell the people that. I was not going to come back the next day, and I was going to give it to Smooth. Smooth's young, you know, and he's got, you know, vibrant, got some good stuff, and, you know, I'd, I'd back Smooth up, and I was going to give it to Smooth Rise, and they said, no, you're going to come back tomorrow, too, and we're going to continue. So they convinced me to play out the whole week and play out the reason why I'm, I was there was b- that I deserve to be there and that I'm a songwriter. It's called, it was called the Songwriter Festival. That's why you're here. And so, you know, it was, it turns out now that it's one of the greatest, uh, I got a solo shirt on now. Yeah. It turns out it's, it was one of the greatest experiences of my, my life. And I thank the people that got me there and got me that experience. And I met songwriters from all over the world and was in there with them, you know, and uh, loved what they did and they loved what I did. And that was, I mean, that felt good as a songwriter. Can you share one of your favorite originals that you've ever written? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So here we go back to girls again. One day you're here, and then the next day you're gone. You're leaving me all alone. I know you sit by the phone, but still you don't answer. You make me feel just like a falling star. I'm wondering where you are. And so I play my guitar, wish on a love song, you're making me crazy. Wondering is this love that I'm feeling now, you're making me crazy. You're in my head when you're not around, you're making me crazy. And are we making love or are we just getting down, you're making me crazy. You know you're making me crazy, all the things you do, baby. Spawn, spawn it up, spawn, spawn it up, spawn, 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 There you go again You're back into my life You're wanting to hold me tight Girl, I wonder if it's for real Or just for tonight You say for friends That making love is nice Well, maybe once or twice But I wonder if tomorrow Things will still be alright You're making me crazy Wondering is this love that I'm feeling now You're making me crazy You're in my head when you're not around You're making me crazy Are we making love or are we just getting down You're making me crazy You know you're making me crazy All the things you do, baby It's bum, spider-dum, spider first I think that was the first hit song I ever wrote and what year uh, was that I had just left true man posse and that had to be this early 2000s 202 203 maybe something like that 
And, you know, I had a long run with Two Man Posse, and then I decided to leave the band like a dummy. <laughs> and uh, I left the band, and uh, I went to, no, it was right before I left the band. I recorded this with True Man Posse. Oh, it was on, it's on True Man's Posse, True Man Posse's album, Creole Reggae. And uh, so it had to be, it was right before I left the band, 202, 203. Yeah, and Rick Lanyo, uh recorded. Tony Daigle actually started recording it, and Rick Lanyo finished it. I think it's probably the first hit song I ever wrote. It's uh, about a girl again. Matter of fact, <laughs> it's about more than one girl. <laughs> it's about a couple of girls this time. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted good. to say she making me crazy, but because we were playing reggae music, it was Jamaican me crazy. So. Jamaican me crazy. Yeah, that's the name of the song. The name of the song is Jamaican Me Crazy. Me crazy. Yeah. yeah. And they end up coming out with a coffee called Jamaican Me Crazy. They came out with a a, a daiquiri called Jamaican Me Crazy. They had uh, the other guitar player from Two Man Posse went to Jamaica with his family. They had shirts when he got there called that said Jamaican Me Crazy. So, I mean... But don't ask me, I didn't get anything out of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the part of the music. The of the that's the part of the music business that kids should know. Yeah. You know, that, you know, even though all that, and I know that that was a hit song, I didn't uh, partake in any of that. I saw, we started riding around, and you see a store fronts had Jamaican Me Crazy uh, signs in the front of it. Uh, Jamaican Me Crazy daiquiris here, and Jamaican Me Crazy coffee. Um, and all those famous things that all happened after that song came out yeah, yeah. and so I don't know like I said um, from friends of mine uh, talked to me about you know trying to find out exactly what happened with the song but you know sometimes you know you just leave things alone so I just left it alone and, um, still today uh, I know and the people Wayne and Walter and Terry who were with me know that that's my song I wrote the song, you know. I love it. I mean, I own it. It's my song and do whatever I want with it. So actually, I entered it, I entered it into a contest <laughs> not too long ago. Good. We'll see what it do. Yeah, so that was Jamaican Me Crazy. I think that was the most famous. And when I was at the uh, Solo Fest, uh, another one of my favorite little grooves was, uh, let's see which one I'm going to do. Short is where I'm from. Three so small cars can only pass there one by one. Twelve people in a two bedroom house. I still wonder how we ever worked it out. I saw this girl while I was standing on the corner. Said, would you like to see my place? Well, she seems like such an iry little daughter. I said, why not? She said, right this way. Well, she took me over here, took me over there. Didn't see a drill on anywhere. Put me in a car, drove me around. People made faces all over town. Now there's one thing I truly understand. There's no love for the Rasta man in the city. So, so take me back to my roots. Take me home back to my roots. Where I belong back to my roots. The Milton John. Take me back to 308 short. Girl, you know that I don't like the city. It's such a noisy place. 
nice and quiet, nice and easy living. Yes, that's enough for this country man. Girl, she came back with another offer. I said, I'll try this once again. But before I could even finish talking, took me to another fancy place. Well, she took me over here, took me over there, didn't see one dreadlock anywhere. Put me in a car, drove me around, people made faces all over town. Now there's one thing I truly understand, there's no love for the Rasta man in the city. So take, so take me back to my roots. Take me home, back to my roots Where I belong, back to my roots To Milton's yard Take me back to 308 short Shoot, 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 shoot Take me back to my roots Take me home, back to my roots, back to my roots, the Milton yard, my roots, take me back to 308 short. Yeah. So, <laughs> was that another original? Yes, 308 short, that's where I grew up. Short Street, it's a little street, only... Yes, and only a, one car can pass there at a time. <laughs> it's in uh, the right. University over there. It's uh, University in Jollyville. But anyway, that's where I grew up. So you Street, street. It was a little sharpshooter house. Uh, we were 12 at the time because my little sister wasn't born yet. So we were 10 kids and my mom and my dad. <clears throat> and we had two bedrooms. You did, the first line, I don't know if y'all heard it, it said 12 people in a two-bedroom house. Yeah. That's uh, my mom and my dad and us. And uh, the guys, we slept in the living room on a cot. The girls had a room. There were seven of them in this little bitty room. And my mom and my dad had the other room, and we had a little bitty small bathroom. But, you know. That'll make you like food and stuff, you know. When you, grow up, <laughs> you, eat you learn how to share. That'll make you learn how to share and make you want to eat whatever, you know. You know, you you you'll become not so proud, you <laughs> you know. But anyway, that's three hundred eight short is the name of that song. So, being a local person and being from Louisiana, what is the advice you would give someone who is a songwriter now? What would if they wanted to not waste any time and really want to get into it? Um, listen to the, um, uh, to the experience, you know, that's, that's, well, we don't have, oh, yeah, I can't say that because we don't have it anymore. I was going to say go to venues like Blue Monday and stuff like that where, you know, cats go, go to the showcases where, uh, songwriters here, cause you got so many songwriters here and so many, um, experienced people who showcase, you know, their talent and stuff. You could just go out and you could learn so much. I mean, that's how I did it. I would watch Sly play all night. I would watch, you know, different people play all night. And the music, you know, it resonates inside you. And then when you go home, it's still playing in your head. And for the and people so, not listening, who, Sly, you said you would go watch Sly all night? Sly, Sly, Sly. Is, uh, was my good friend. He's uh, Russell Dorian. Yeah, he's passed away. Yeah, he was Sorry a good friend it. of mine. He was a, uh, I was his, his guitar tech. I was his roadie when I was a kid. I would carry his guitar, tune it up for him before the show and set up his amp and everything. Great guitar player. Is that how you learned how to play the guitar? No, from the guy. Remember I told you? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when the girl broke my heart. Yeah. <laughs> heart broke, maybe yeah, learn yeah, the guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you're happy in a relationship, learn, trying to learn the guitar, it might not work. No, 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 it might not work. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Go through some heartache. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure they could hear me, Mr. Russell, on this one. So we have time for one more good one. 
Okay. And I want you to know Mr. Lee Allen just called me and he put in a request. What do you want? He wants Pimper's Paradise. Uh oh. So uh -oh. once again, guys, this is Russell Cormier, uh, amazing musician, amazing man, hardworking guy, and inspiration to everybody who knows him. Uh, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> We'll try it, Mr. Lee. <laughs> Pimpa's Paradise. It's been a while. She loves to party. Have a good time. She looks so hearty. Feeling fine. She likes to smoke. Sometimes she'll sniff coke. And she'll be laughing when them ain't no joke. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Pimper's Paradise. Pimper's Paradise. That's all she was. That's Bob Marley. That's Bob. Oh, <laughs> see, kids don't know better. Don't we don't know much. <laughs> we don't know much. <laughs> Put it in the book. <laughs> yeah, that's Bob. That was a good one, man. Once again, if you want any of this music, you can get his album. Where can they find it? Art Country? Um, uh, iTunes, Apple, Spotify. There's three of them up there, three or four. There's Opposite People, there's Our Country. Um, and all about love. No, love is the root. My bad. One called love is the root. Our country, and one called opposite people. They're all three um, 
iTunes, Apple, Spotify, and probably some other uh, that I don't know. I kind of lose track of that. After I write a song, I just move on to the next project. Gotcha. Whatever God sent me to next. So yeah. I got to enjoy you at the office one night or a Sunday. For, yeah. But where before then, where could people, before the world and the corona and everything else, where could people catch you? Uh, we play out at Reggie's. Uh, my uh, nephew had a, a soul food restaurant. I don't think it's there anymore, but we used to play a, a lot at Reggie's. Uh, oh, yeah, and off of uh, Congress. That's back right yeah, there. Yeah, right, yeah. under the uh, yeah. the lofts, yeah. Um, man, we played so many places. Phew. Uh, Blue Moon, we used to play Blue Moon pretty much, and uh, just a lot of different places and festivals and different stuff like that, you know. Uh, and on AOC, <laughs> I'm always on AOC doing some kind of show or something, putting the music on um, AOC, giving it away sometimes for free. But really, you know, musicians, I don't tell people out there, buy local musicians' yeah, music. Local. Support these musicians because they work hard. And some of them are going to grow old and going to need that money for health care and for different things, you know, like what John takes care of. You know, we've seen some of our good friends um perish and pass away and you know some of them didn't have everything that they needed when they passed away so we want to try to fix that for the rest of us and you know also by supporting local artists you support like the local culture you support our culture down here and this culture is so rich you know in music and food and everything that we have you know coronavirus won't last forever it's gonna go away we're gonna come back outside we're gonna start playing music again and we're gonna start doing things again so we need to uh support each other in what they do i support every i try to get to every event but i know i can't you know but i i try to get to as many events locally that i can yeah and it doesn't you know? take that much to support a you like know, and, um, or maybe just a donation you can do one right yeah, now at yeah. venmo love of people there you go there support you go. an artist russell yeah. cormier yeah there you go that's right and i yeah. know one time we talked about having a reggae place in lafayette mm -hmm. yeah. Where is it? When is it? Can we? They do tried to, do, to do it at the beer garden. They were doing it. Matter of fact, my last show yep. was uh, for the beer garden folks, for Angela and and Robert and them. We opened for uh, Kimani Marley. Yep. At, uh, Night uh, Town. Yep. Yeah, we opened for them. But across the street is the beer garden, and we played at the beer garden also. Um, we did a couple of CD release party over there we did something else over there but and then we also played at the omni when they had the omni open yeah. for bands we played there you know so they've been doing you know some good stuff with reggae they've been bringing bands from out of town and bringing uh also supporting the local acts too you know, what was nice was that the first time that they had a reggae show at the omni we were the act nice. so they used the local act that was cool you know what i'm saying they said a it's cool to go out of town and get acts too, but I mean, if you got it right here at home, yeah. support local. You at know, least have them be the openers, like yeah. you did with the, the other Marley show. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I think they should be a hole in the wall place out here that you can go to and that, get your fix a weekly. That was Visions. Man, that was man. Visions. That was Shadows. That was Chris Omiji, my good See, friend. See, that's what's called Shadows. See, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Dark yeah, place. Yeah, it was right by about. UL campus and. When we were uh, with True Man Posse years ago, we mostly played played for college kids. That was the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Them was some parties. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you want to have the bar sale. Yeah, I can't tell. <laughs> That's when you made and some you know, songs. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, we actually, you know, on the soul ourselves because uh, we played for a, a price when we should have played for the door. Sidebar, remember sidebar? Sidebar was, uh, man, it would be, we, we played for college kids. That's all I need to say. When school would be, you see, like next month, August, the end of August, all the college kids are coming back into town. It's on the flood, UL, where we would hit the downtown area. And I mean, of course, you know, it was our heyday. We were the band of, of that time. Uh, and it was, it was beautiful. We'd even travel to uh, Baton Rouge. We used to play LSU parties, too. In Baton yeah. Rouge, you ever played at a place called Culture? No, we never played Culture. We played at, man, I'm trying to think of the name of the place. It's right by Culture. Uh, shoot, I can't remember. Not the Varsity. 
It's a popular place too. We play there all the time, and uh, and plus we play frat parties. Right. Nothing beats a frat party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger Lane, like Fred's and things like that. Yeah. Frat, oh, frat party, man. It was just so we, you know, we played all these uh, type of gigs, and um, this these gigs are still available here in, in Lafayette, and there's such a uh, yes. rich, rich culture of, of gigs man a lot of music made a comeback i'm proud of it you know what i'm saying because for a while you know digital had you know kind of stolen the show digital about was, djs <clears throat> no 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 just just digital just um a just, guy would come up there with a guitar maybe and he would have a foot like, pedal yeah and, and some you know and that's okay ain't nothing wrong with that you know but i mean there's nothing like a band to me and i like the original you aspect know? Yeah, in the in the original, original songs, aspect, not just yeah. a cover band. Or even if you just you know, even if you originally cover something, yeah. because you can originally cover something because you're not gonna do it like the artist anyway. You, you know, might as well do it like yourself. You're gonna do it like yourself, you know. And and I, I don't know, it's it, I think live music made a great you know return back onto the scene, and of course it's crazy the world you know thing happened in the world with the disease, which we're gonna beat. We're gonna fix it up, but I mean music was on its way. You know, we was, I was enjoying it. We wouldn't play as much as we used to play, but we play like select gigs, and these gigs be like awesome. Yeah. You know, the, the gig will hold you for a while. You know, you, you know, a lot of uh, the younger kids, I understand what they're doing, and I mean, I can't do that no more. I can't beat myself up and try to play five, six nights a week like I used to do when I was young. And I was doing that and going to work. Well, I still go to work now. I was playing five, six nights a week and going to work. I, I can't do that no more. Now I'll play a gig and it'll be a good gig and it'll be something substantial for a cause, for a reason, you know, you know, and that's my thing now. Every time I talk to Chess, I'll be like, oh, what's the gig for? Yeah. You know, and I, be, I know they'll be wondering, well, why is Russ asking that? Because I want to know, you know, I want to know what we're playing for. If we're just going to play for, you know, the people to come out and have fun, have drinks, sometimes that's cool, but sometimes you have to play for a reason, you know, and for a cause. Music is put here for a reason, for a cause. It's here for something. And I love causes. I love causes. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, you always call me for causes. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know I'm coming. <laughs> you know I'm coming because I like that kind of stuff. You know. So we was talking about bringing things back. Do you think reggae music is gonna come back even more once certain things get legalized? Yeah, um, I think so. I think we just need to. Yeah, uh, yeah, that too. <laughs> they got to just figure that out. You know, uh, they have to figure that out. How? that's going to work in the workplace. Oh, so am I going to go to my job and say, oh, I got a prescription for marijuana now. Like I say, uh, I got some painkillers from the doctor because I got hurt. And so uh, I'm going to be at work today with these painkillers. Uh, so am I going to work and say, oh, I got a prescription for marijuana because I got these aches and pains, you know, so they tell me marijuana. Will, they, will that work with the job place, you know? And I'm pretty sure that's going to be dependent on what you do for a living. If you operate heavy equipment, if you, you know what I'm saying? I can understand Same that. Same guidelines. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, you dig what I'm saying? So as far as it concerning, you know, the music, uh, people want to feel free, you know, when they go out to a place and, you know, enjoy reggae music. The last show, like, I, that's a good point you bring up, Lamar, because the last show I was at. That was the night were, town. yeah. I don't want to tell on them, but... Yeah, you were to oh, uh, I was just wondering if that was the last place you played that. I was just recapping the story. Let's pretend like it was. No, no, let's somewhere else. Let's yeah, yeah. People people were allowed, you know, at that place that was, you know, it was free in there. It was, everybody was allowed to feel good in there, and it was a beautiful time. Yeah. There wasn't a fight. There wasn't... I don't think there was a fuss in there or argument, you know, and, and it makes a difference, you know? And it's sometimes when you put those authority figures in a place, it causes more confusion than it helps sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's necessary. It just wasn't necessary that night. And a beautiful night. I didn't hear not one altercation or one thing that happened there. I didn't hear it in the aftermath. You know, the days are coming. People just talk good about that show for like days and weeks after that show. There wasn't... There was no authority in there at all. Well, that was, and was, the place was a one big cloud of. It was beautiful to see, man. Just you know yeah. the engagement that people had. Yeah. You know, I hadn't seen a line of, you know, middle aged to older you saw black that? folks. 
Yeah, outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. That outside, was beautiful. Paying yeah. Twenty five dollars. Paying twenty five. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just, but you know, we, we need more of that. Yeah, we need more of that. Yeah, we need we need to do that, and we need to support our local artists like that also. You know, I agree totally. and that was that was cool for us to support a man from his bloodline. You know, Bob's bloodline and everything. But we also need to support our local artists like that. We don't support our local artists like we should. Yeah. You know, we don't. Um, That's always been one of the purpose for a Blue Monday mission was to, um, you know, really educate our community on what makes this spe- this place so special. Yes. And it is our culture and our arts, but mm-hmm. these are people that have, like, dedicated their lives behind it. This yes. is not an act. Oh no! This is there's no act. It's, it's it's for real, yeah. and it's uh it's survival and it's uh it's bread or not with some of them. Yeah, it's eat or not eat. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, for a fact, you know, because you feed them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's eat or not eat with some of these folks, man. I mean, and like I tell people all the time, I was I'm gonna give you an example. I was donating for the I don't remember which fund it was. I mean. It was one of the funds when the corona first happened for the musicians fund. One guy asked me, he said, you got your, you got, you got your little shake from the musicians fund because he said it, it was donating for all the musicians. And I was like, what? I said, I don't want none of that. He said, but you're a musician. Why don't you want none of that? I said, because I got a job. Yeah. I'm donating for the musicians who play music all their uh only play music that's their livelihood i'm donating to them yeah. because i work for a living i got a job for a living in music I, although i work at playing music it's not the only thing that i do so because i got a little up and up somewhere else i'm gonna give and help my brothers in arms out you know he said but you should get your shit no i shouldn't why should i take from something that i don't need them. you know and, and and that that is a great point you, you bring up you know? russell because you know i do you know, like for instance, I own a private company, mm-hmm. but then, hey, I still do this, I still do that in order to make other ends meet. Mm-hmm. So that is definitely something that I try to share with the younger musician coming up, mm-hmm. that, you know, you put all your eggs in this basket, mm-hmm. well, then you better become, uh, like, well-rounded and know your business. You know move. what you're creating, yeah. mm-hmm. how to hold on to yeah. it, how to keep it, yeah. how to sell it, how to capitalize right. on it. And if you're not willing to do that, then yes, you had better have something some other ex, some other exit because if you got children yes. or something like I had kids they can't eat good I, and vibes. I had a wife you know <laughs> and I didn't um, is I wouldn't have survived on just music around yeah. here because there's so many musicians playing out of eating out the same cup yeah that it the cup can't feed us all yeah and so you got to do something else so I had to do something else I got me a job I wanted to keep my wife and my family yeah then I had to get a job and so I do believe I, with this COVID thing going on. You know, this de- like with this live studio is definitely one of the purpose of it mm-hmm. is to um, use our culture to push through this time. Okay. You know, you have so many people stuck at home, depression, right. you know, being excluded from others. Right. You know, right now is the time where uh, our community can really come together and really appreciate what our creative economy has done for this area mm-hmm. and really start to give it uh, the credit it's due. That's it, that's it. Yeah, and I hope that, you know, people understand that, you know, uh, like you said, to uh, donate to these musicians who need, you know, they need help, you know, until they can get, some of them maybe can't get a, a, another job, you know, mm-hmm. to, to help them, you know, with the things that they need, but until they can, well, you know, we can help them out. That's it. Those of us who are able, you know. If you're able, help. Yeah. You know, that's what I say. And speaking of giving and helping, we want to give today. You can donate yeah. to a lot of that's people via Venmo. That's how you do it. Any donation is appreciated. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're trying to keep the culture alive, like you said, by supporting artists that can't go out and have those shows right now because of corona and just health and well-being. Mm-hmm. Uh, so support your culture, support your local musician, local songwriter like Russell Cormier. Yeah. Appreciate that, man. Beautiful. Thank you guys again for paying attention and watching. And if you want to share this and like, and if you want to send a donation, any size, a dollar to whatever your heart feels. Once again, that is love of people via Venmo. Y'all have a great Thursday and a great weekend.